170 pounds. Sean, whiteboard predictions. We said earlier this was going to be a tough, tough weight class. Oh, I thought you said it was going to be a tough, tough night. Well, it's already a tough night. It's going into a tough morning. Wow. But I figure a guy like you who may know a thing or two about the sport, yeah, <laughs> you might be able to help us out with this weight class. As we're rounding close to 3 a.m. in the morning on Monday, we come to this 170-pound weight class. And even with the departure of Longo and Carroll to 182, we are still left with seven worthy individuals looking for but one of four seats on the train to the shopping state. At the beginning of the season, I talked to the guys from Intermat up in North Kent Hoover and we talked about guys in Columbus and talked about state rankings. like, what do you think about our state rankings for the guys down in Columbus? And I said, you know, when I look at these rankings, just not in Columbus, but just for the state, I think you guys have a bias for the northern part of the state. And I know that's where the good wrestling is over the years. I think Columbus is getting better. Obviously, we're not there. But the reason why I feel as if I have good rankings is there's no bias. I honestly don't care who wins. And by not doing that, I think I get a better gauge on how good a kid is or a kid is not. That little skill of mine, I think, comes in very handy at 170 and 182, as we'll talk about later, as there's just a absolute galore of kids in these next two weights that we just like. The more me and Mark do this, the more people we meet, the more families, parents, guys, we just love them. And I feel like in a small way, putting a kid on the line at this weight is like telling one of my sons which one I love the most in a small <laughs> way and it's just unfortunate that somebody has to lose when I've met these guys I've known them for so long but again we got seven great wrestlers with only four people and someone yeah. ain't gonna make it so with that let's take a look at this fabulous let's weight at 170 take a look great weight class you talk about meeting these kids I'm still working up the, the strength and the you know just the resolve to give uh, Jojo Terry a noogie I mean, he might beat me up or something like that, wow. yeah. Uh, Terry, McRitchie, Hess, Hipshire, first four. Davidson, Brown, Buck, Hurd are your second four. Goldsmith, McBride, Alvarez, and Harrell. Harrell, sorry. <whistles> Harrell are your next four. And then your last four are Kennedy, Lawson, <clears throat> Sagamanyan, and Stratton. I should have practiced that name a little bit. Sorry yeah, that about that. That was pretty good, Mark. That's, Thank that's you. actually Thank pretty good. Thing. This coming from him who we can't say. Smith. Stratton rounded it out. We moved him over. Terry, Hess, Davidson, Hurd in the top. Goldsmith, Harrell, Lawson, and Stratton in the bottom. Sean, talk about it. Let's go. Well, I think the glaring thing at this weight that everyone's right. talking about is that Terry did himself a world of favor yeah. by winning that weight class and then getting fortunate enough for the Upper Arlington sectional champ to be put with the two and three out of Newark here. Mm -hmm. I think this is just selling out beautifully for uh, JoJo Terry. And we will start at the top as I think Terry will easily clear the quarter here beating Hess who does have a win over Jimmy Thompson and Colton Carroll this year in his own right. Nice. Those are two big wins. Um, We're going to come down here, which is probably the, the next one below that. It's probably, without a doubt, the easiest quarter of this weight class. But we'll have Carter Davidson, who, uh, who has a uh, win over Longo at the Greater Miami Valley, to advance out here as well. About right here. And then the fireworks come. I mean, it's bombs away from this Let's point. Let's hashtag them, boys. There's two hashtag matches here. Boom! If you've ever seen Lawson and Stratton, this is going to be two kids of identical stature wrestling each other as these guys are both long. 6'2", easily. Yeah, if you put these guys together, whatever their combined height is, is probably a world record for the tallest guys ever wrestled in a, yeah, a quarterfinal match. So... Uh, we'll start at the top here of this uh, bracket here. we got Goldsmith and Harrell. And I think I'm going to go with Harrell on this just because Goldsmith wrestles so many close matches. I mean, he's like a one or two point guy against world champions and four-time sectional qualifiers, per se, that I think Don't if he leaves it close and lets Harrell with his incredible athleticism, 
True. They just steal it in the last second in a blink of an eye. And the Goldsmith's close matches just really make me nervous in this spot. And the bottom one, you know, I've talked about Trevor Lawson all year, how this guy has improved leaps and bounds. Here. I've seen him getting better. I've seen him have that match with Andresi up in Stowe that like, he let yes. slip away. And his match with uh, Terry at Newark was probably a better match than Harrell, uh, Harrell gave mm -hmm. with Terry in the finals there. So I'm going to go Lawson here in the bottom. That is one heck of a sectional tournament. Man. Olin Tangi Liberty. So we're going to bring these guys yes, over here. Yes, we are. We're going to cross them over. <laughs> there they are. There's those four. There's four guys. I just don't think anybody in the constellation can crack them. So we're going to start at the uh, bottom here and have Hess beating Hurd. Ooh. To get himself into the blood round. And at the top, we're Ooh. going to go in another match that could go either way. We're going to go with uh, Goldsmith here. Goldsmith. Let's go with uh, Westerville North. And those guys need opponents. Okay. We get them from the semifinal oh, losers. We, just can't, we can't give them buys? Nope, can't do it. So, Terry Davidson, Harold Lawson, go. And our theme is? Start with the easier one. Start with the easier one. It's JoJo Terry. Like I said, I think this bracket just set up beautifully for him. I think he's just going to clear this top without really breaking a sweat of any degree. No, he, he works out before the match. He gets sweaty. And then we're going to move down to the bottom here in a match that I just really don't know. We have two contrasting styles here. The problem yes. with, the problem with her, uh, Harold is what we talked about at the beginning of the uh, season is he's become such a more patient wrestler than he has been. And now I think that may be starting to work against him as he's not creating uh, uh, flurries, flurries yeah. and scramble situations to utilize his incredible athleticism. He's going to let it slow down. Lawson is a very great wrestler on the mat, has exceptional skills. And Mark, I'm going to let you decide this one. I don't want to. Um, I'll get beat up by both of them if I pick the wrong one, you know what I mean? So It's a tough world, man. It is. Um, well, once again, this is the Prove Us Wrong campaign, so I will gladly accept uh, a loss in this. Again, like Sean said, we don't care who wins. We just want to see a good match. And I think looking at it, I think I'm going to pick... Ah! Gosh, wow, this is tough. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Harold here. I think he's going to let it fly. He's going to make it happen. And uh, that's what's going to happen. Okay. That's what I got. So Lawson's going to come over here. Lawson on Tangent Liberty. Taking on Davidson. No, not taking on. Along with Davidson, Delaware Hayes, Goldsmith. Davidson, Hess, Lawson, who you got? Yeah, I have two I have two really strong picks here. I have Lawson beating Hess, and then I have Goldsmith finally punching that ticket that has eluded him for the last three years and getting to the shot with the win over Davidson. Goldsmith. Westerville North. That means we got Davidson. From Delaware Hayes down here, along with Hess from Gahanna Lincoln. Now we need finals matches. Go! We're going to have Davidson getting the alternate spot. Davidson, Delaware Hayes. We will have Lawson getting the third place spot here. Love their dip. And what about Harold Terry? Coming into this season, JoJo Terry, as far as back records as we can find, is only the second three-time district placer to enter the senior season yes. without being a state qualifier. Who was the other one? Cochran. Cole, Cole Cochran, Cochran from Troy. Which is a little asterisk because he only came into the district his senior year as Dayton had the option to go to Fairfield, whatever. But nonetheless, he did come to the Derby District as a three-time placer being a non-state qualifier. What did he do his senior year? He was a finalist that year, and he won it 
He won it. And I think JoJo Terry is finally going to punch his ticket and follow the same path as Cole Cochran and become a district champion in his fourth try to get to the Schottenstein Center. A very well-deserved championship. Yeah. So Terry is your champ, followed by Harrow and runner-up. We have Lawson for third, rounding out your state qualifiers as Goldsmith from Muscle Row North. State alternate Davidson from Delaware Hayes with the state, or I'm sorry, the district place winner Hess from Gahanna Lincoln, and that is 170 pounds. And now you are inside.